And I would say that um, really we see it as kind of more of a content strategy because what we're looking at is how information kind of flows through um, the social media profile, but also the website and the blog and all um, of sustainability at Cornell's um, kind of online, online uh, properties. So Scott and I are from a business called Think Topography, and we were involved with the uh, early planning stages of the website, in fact. So we helped, um, we helped the team kind of think about why they needed a blog and why their website should function in the way it does. And so a lot of the, uh, a lot of the themes that the website convey were, uh, were determined in these early planning meetings. And um, the most important kind of central theme that we wanted to um, put forth with the website was that Cornell is a living laboratory. That's a theme that you might have been hearing about today at the, at the uh, summit. But the idea that if you can learn about composting here at Cornell, and you can learn about water conservation, and you can learn about waste management, all these are things that you can actually take forth into the world and places where you go where they don't have a composting program, you can be like, oh, well, we did that at Cornell, and here's the way it used to work at the university. So this concept of you learn about how these sustainability initiatives can be implemented in an institution or in a workplace, you can actually take that out into the world. And so we really wanted to create a website and a, um, really a messaging presence around that idea of Cornell being a living laboratory. Um, in addition to that, um, there was a lot of work that was being done with all of the teams about um, creating a, what were called the SMART objectives, which um, I hope everyone is familiar with, or if you're not, um, they're available. But the SMART objectives were um, what you actually hope to accomplish for you know, water conservation or in waste management or in energy management. There were these SMART goals, and the SMART goals had tactics that you could, you could use to achieve your goals. They had a definition of the audience and the behavior changes you wanted to drive with your audience. There were these SMART goals that were put forth. And the content strategy that we put together really tried to incorporate the idea of enforcing and helping to promote these SMART goals as well as keeping up with the So um, Scott and I are going to talk a little bit about some strategies and tactics you can use with the blog and social media and website. But really, the important part to remember is that all of you can reinforce those two principal independent areas of Cornell's and the laboratory and the smart objectives of each team. So um, the, social, the, the content strategy that we put together it really um, uses the blog as kind of a clearinghouse for information. We want to bring people back to the blog as much as possible because we just use the blog as like an attractor for audience members. So then once they're there, they can be like, oh, well, what's going on? You know, with, what's this take back to the tap initiative? Or what is this composting in the, in the, um, in the dining hall? So all of them. And you use the blog as an attractor. So the social media strategy, the content strategy, as we call it, it all uses the blog as kind of a clearinghouse for information. So we're going to start um, talking about, you know, how you use the blog to get your content out there and then how you can use social media to pull people in to look at the blog and to, you know, to, to, to learn more about sustainability and more now. Um, and I'm not sure, I think that might be a decent place to, you know, to jump into strategy. Is there anything else around that oh, that um, you think would be important to mention? The, the content landscape and gathering oh, information. Yeah. So, you know, the first part of, you know, our engagement with, um, with the Sunday strategy is we try to look at how information is really going to flow through the blog. And so, there are 10 teams, and I imagine many of you are delegates from each of those teams. Um, we want the sustainability of Cornell social media and you know, blogging credits to be really active, but with one person responsible for all the blog posts and all of the posts to Facebook, it would be a lot of work. So by having 10 representatives from each of the teams, if everyone does some one thing a week or two things a week, it gives the opportunity for it all to go through a central profile, for that central profile to be very active. You know, we looked at the opportunity of like having a water you know, conservation profile and uh, you know, uh, energy management um, profile, and it would be a lot of work. You know? And clearly, everyone could do a good job of maintaining those profiles, but by using a central profile and allowing the responsibility for to be shared, there's a lot more opportunity to have that be a really active and daily, almost um, daily interactions with you know, the community. So that was, that was the, the design choice we had for how it would work. And so um, if you really think about trying to do something like every other, every week or every other week, it's going to create an opportunity for a lot of, a lot of um, activity on the profile. Um, 
And then in addition to that, when we were looking at how um, blog posts would be um, handled, we wanted to make sure that you guys had as much uh, autonomy in creating the blog post, and yet the Cornell Sustainability team actually had the uh, most about a choice when a blog post was actually put out through social media and how that you know, full loop would happen. So there's some degree of communication that goes back and forth between you know, the teams as well as the sustainability of Cornell. And Scott will be talking a little bit about that. So.